No! Welcome to Gone Fishing. All right, fellas, Gone Home is a walking simulator. It is very boring and tedious and nothing really happens. They don't even give you a gun, but it is incredibly emotional. And as such, we shall be walking through very slowly, absorbing all of the atmosphere, and eventually solving the ultimate question of the game, where is everybody at? And to help me explain this game, I am joined by Mr. Branson. And you're gonna let me go home afterwards, right? The game's afoot. Hi, Mom. Uh, so I got my ticket home from Europe. I get back on June 6th, but it's a really late flight because that was the cheapest, so it gets in at midnight. We play as the character who just left that voicemail, and we do not know her name yet. She is passive-aggressively leaving a voicemail saying, you don't have to pick me up, really. But don't worry, I'll get a shuttle from the airport so you don't have to pick me up. Like, really seriously, you don't have to. <laughs> I'm a little sick, but I can catch a cab. We, so we go from the airport to the family home. It is the early morning on June 7th, 1995. And we are standing on the porch of the family home. But it's like enclosed, right? There's walls and stuff. We try the doorknob. Uh-oh. We cannot get into the house. How odd. So we try knocking. And Dr. Watson, nobody's answering the door. And there's not a single sound coming from inside the house either. Oh, that's quite strange. Where everybody be at, right? Now it's very odd that no one's answering the door because it's 1.15 a.m. on a Wednesday. So, are they all dead inside? Did they die many, many moons ago? So we go searching through all the furniture on the porch. There's some wooden chairs, there's a table, there's a cabinet. Oh! In the cabinet, there's a rubber duck. And underneath that rubber duck is a key. Ah. All right, now we've got our key, so we go to open the front door, but then... <gasps> Is that a note? Let's read the note right now, Dr. Watson. It says, Katie, I'm sorry I can't be there to see you, but it is impossible. Please, please don't go digging around trying to find out where I am. We'll see each other again, dot, dot, dot. Someday, I love you, Sam. Well, Dr. Watson, I'm going to make a little deducing. Go on. I think Sam is actually short for Sam Ampha, because a dude would never write a little like that. Wow, Mr. Holmes, you've done it again. Another magnificent deduction. So, we unlock the door and then we head inside. But first we've got to get our bags. So when we turn around, we can see that on a name tag is Caitlin Greenbrier. And that's us. Caitlin is the name of our protagonist. Perfect. Caitlin. So we walk through the door and inside it is very dark and spooky. It's kind of a grand staircase and there's rooms that branch off to the left and to the right. But over in the left hand corner is a family portrait. Uh, 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 Dr. Watson, we should go over there and find out who our family is. Yes, Holmes. So we go over to the portrait. This is the Greenbrier family. Now, the one at the top here in the black, that's Katie. That's who we're playing as. Right. The lady at the front is Janice, or Jan, Greenbrier, the mother. And to the right is Terry, who is the father. And the one in the green flannelette shirt here is Sam. I think I know what's going on here, Dr. Watson. What do you mean? Well, she's wearing a green flannel shirt. And, and are those Doc Martens I spot at the bottom? I think something's going on here. All right, so next we notice there's a pile of moving boxes stacked by the door. Dr. Watson, what's going on there? Well, according to this invoice, Mr. Holmes, they've moved in last year. August 1994. Wait a minute, Dr. Watson. <laughs> Look at this. If there's both a library and an office, perhaps somebody works from home? That's actually some pretty fucking good deduction work there. Oh, yeah. Suddenly, we hear a disembodied voice, and it says, Dear Katie, so much has changed, even just since you've been away. That is Katie's younger sister, Sam. Once in a while throughout the game, she'll appear and give us a little monologue. But it's just a memory. She's not a ghost. I think it's a ghost. Huh? I'm going to go with ghost, fellas. No, no, no. We then go to a closet, and we open it to find a spooky ghost. No, no it's, it's a, a jacket. jacket. It's got an ID on it. Oh, my God, that's me mum. Janice Greenbrier, a senior conservationist at Tekelma County Forestry Service. If she has a job in forestry, then she likely has an outdoor job. And because there's an office and a library, that must mean that the father works from home. Right, Dr. Watson? Right? Elementary. 
Element Tree. Anyway, thanks everyone. Rest. It's been real good. Thanks for having me on Story Mode, guys. So now we go to the answering machine. And when Katie hits play, she hears two messages. The first one goes, Believe it or not, George isn't at home. But really, it goes, Sam. Sam. Hello. Sam. Oh my god. So oh when. Oh my god. <laughs> and the second one is, Sam, where are you? Really? <laughs> Yeah, so it's a young woman. She sounds very distressed. She's crying. She's going, Sam, Sam, you got me, got me. It's very emotional. All right, Dr. Watson, let me go into my mind palace. All right, Katie has come back from Europe, and she was not expected home by her parents. Otherwise, they would have come and picked her up from the airport. Either that, or they are somehow dysfunctional. Based on the fact that the bloody moving boxes haven't even been unpacked, I would say that it is dysfunctional penance. Now, Sam is not here, and it seems as though she has left, and in a state of great distress. Therefore, Dr. Watson, my conclusion, a ghost showed up and has been pretending to be Katie the whole time. That's gonna be my guess, Dr. Watson. Make, make a note, make a note. Uh, uh. <laughs> yes, Holmes. Um... But first, make a note of ad time. It's the 11 year anniversary of NordVPN and to celebrate we're doing a speed run of Gone Home. Here's a trick, you use NordVPN, you can go from the lounge to the sex room to the indoor pool to the back rooms with the simple press of a button. Hold on, I'm getting a voicemail. Sam, Sam, have you heard of Nord? Wow, this is emotional, fellas. I'm going back to Europe. There's websites out there and they're trying to get your data. Luckily, I keep mine under a duck. Oh, there everyone is. They weren't dead after all, spoiler warning. They were busy watching the international Netflix catalog. Sorry we didn't open the door. Friends was on. Actually, the parents are dead, spoiler warning. But even ghosts love the huge discount on a two year plan plus four bonus months. Oh look, in fact, because it's Nord's birthday, you have the chance to win somewhere between four and 12 bonus months. There's a countdown timer in the corner till Nord turns 18. A clue, what could it mean? Quick tell us time. NordVPN, that's s -ray. Everything else, that's down here. Oh no, fellas. Stream has been hijacked. Someone found my duck. Go to nordvpn.com slash story mode to get a huge deal on a two-year plan, plus four to 12 bonus months. And try not to cry at this incredibly emotional scene. Sam, 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 Sam. All right, so we have to explore the rest of the house, but this game gets slow and tedious. So we are going to inject a solution of cocaine and water, as Sherlock Holmes regularly does in the novels, and we are going to go faster, faster, faster. Watson also took the cocaine. <laughs> Here you go, we can share needles. All right, so we get to a hallway, and in the hallway is a set of drawers. We open the drawers and inside we see a photo of a pink haired girl in some sort of military uniform. Oh, I got it. That one's the girlfriend of whatever one's the lesbian. Did I get it? No, we're, we're not supposed to find that out until later. Oh, sorry, fellas. Spoilers, says Sherlock Holmes. I'm too good at deducing. <laughs> All right, so we continue on through the hallway until we get to the lounge. Inside the lounge, you see the TV, you see a couch and, you know, usual lounge stuff. You know that feeling? Where the first moment you see someone, it's like they have a big gold star around them. Oh my god. You have to get Shut to up. Know them. Shut up. So, what we hear from Sam talking to Katie about this girl she's seen around the place who has punk aesthetics and is sometimes in an army uniform. Whoa. And essentially Sam wants to be her friend, but he does, she just doesn't know how to talk to her. Now attached to the lounge room is a closet and we open the door and there's Sam. Sam's in the closet. It's a big metaphor. She's a big lesbian, isn't she, Dr. Holmes? Wait, that's me. <laughs> I think you've had a bit too much speed run juice. Elementary, my So dear. really, well, okay, what we can take away currently is that Sam doesn't get along with people at school, no. isn't doing well at school, no, no one likes her, no. and she's always been that way. So, Katie goes back into the hallway. She looks around and finds a note on the dresser. That's from Sam to Lonnie, who is that punk girl that Sam has a crush on. She was very cool. Mm. They have a friendship blossoming, it's very beautiful. So now, Katie goes upstairs to try and find some more clues. Oh my god, there's a second floor. But how many floors? There's a secret passage and a basement and a whole second half to the first floor as well. Bomb this house, please. Look, let's just go through each person's story instead of going room by room. 
How's that sound? Perfect. That's it. I love it. Off you go, Dr. Watson. <laughs> All right, so on the first floor, we find an office. Here we can see a desk and tons of books and all sorts of writings and stuff. But on top of one of the bookcases, we see some hidden alcohol. Oh. Why would there be alcohol hidden away on the top of a cupboard? And there on top of the desk is a typewriter. And in the typewriter is a new review for something. Okay, so the father is a either a copywriter or a reviewer of electronics. Right, now we go over to a pin board and it says, well, oh, hold on a minute, this is getting good. What if JFK wasn't JFK? JFK president, US and USSR coalition, Chinese, Japanese, Lebanese. Three sides of the same coin. <laughs> okay, so the father is going mad. So the father writes thriller novels where there's a main character who goes back in time and saves JFK. Oh, okay. So he writes crazy thrillers. Uh, you're right. So these are all just the terrible, terrible ideas he has for a novel. So we leave this office dad boring and we go into the library. So Katie in the library, she finds a box full of these JFK books written by her JFK. father, Terry. Oh. Yeah. Why would there be a box full of these books hidden away if he was doing well? Oh, I know, because they don't sell. That's exactly it, Holmes. You've done it again. One final thing. There is a note written to Terry. It's from his editor who is saying he's on thin ice. <gasps> he's saying his reviews aren't very good, but he's just talking about other random stuff. <laughs> Terry's that guy who would start his review for, like, Forspoken with, I too have a dream. <laughs> Right, so what do we take away from the family from this room? So the father sustains himself with the tech review job. He finds it very unfulfilling, however. Instead, he wants to write novels, but these novels are not very successful. So he has moved to drink. That was perfect. Elementary, my dear Dr. Watt. Now it's time for Janice's story. So we go upstairs and in a hallway, we find a schedule. There it says couples bowling, couples cooking classes and all sorts of stuff. But after the couples bowling, everything else is crossed out. It looks like after they went bowling once, she cancelled all the plans. So I think it's safe to say, Holmes, the marriage might be falling apart. Uh-oh. Plus, look at this, Dr. Watson. Oh, God. There's a note and it says there's a new ranger, Richard Patamach. He's German. That means fast dad. <laughs> So he is being transferred to Janice's forest station. That means they're going to be co-workers. Or... And I hear he's very sexy. <gasps> we also find a performance review that Janice wrote for this slick Rick customer. All fives. Lots of stamina. Uh... <laughs> Has a lot of cum. And so she wants him to stay on permanently in this position. Hmm, says Katie. I think me mom is cheating on me dad. So we break into the parents' bedroom to look for some sordid clues. Katie, she's pulling through drawers. In one of the drawers, she finds one single condom. How do you buy just one condom? Doesn't matter. The thing is, why would you have a condom if you were like 40 something and in a long-term marriage? Underneath her bed, is a Walt Whitman poetry book, and inside it there's a bookmark that says, take your time, I'm glad to have it in good hands. From Rick. Oh, that son of a bitch. We also find a pack of matchsticks that says, meet me at eight o'clock at this hotel. Love, Rick. Oh my God, she's having an affair with a pickle. <laughs> it was a cucumber when he started working there. <laughs> All right. So Katie rushes through the house, and in the greenhouse, she finds a brochure to a couple's counseling retreat. And look, it says June 3rd to 7th, 1995. Today's the 7th. That's where they are now. Well, oh, mystery solved, fellas. Now everything's gonna be okay. So, in conclusion, the parents aren't here because they're just on a couple's counseling retreat. All right, so the last mystery to solve is where the hell is Sam? We break into Sam's room. It seems as though, Dr. Watson, you explain it. Lonnie and Sam became friends. Sam now likes Lonnie. Ooh. But Lonnie is a bad influence. Oh. She's even smoking cigarettes now. And all of this turns into a bit of a romance. Oh. Wait a minute. She's one of those girls that likes girls. What do they call those? <gasps> the Lebanese. <laughs> Chinese, <laughs> Japanese, Lebanese. <laughs> that clues are oh all my God. along. Sherlock, I think we're digging too deep. I won't have any Lebanese tortoise in my house, says Terry, as he throws one of his unsold books. So Katie finds a map 
that mm. shows that the house is full of secret compartments. Oh, all sorts God. of stuff to explore. Oh, let it end. We'll just hurry through it, Holmes, okay? The game's almost over now. So, we go to the basement, and we find a note that suggests that Lonnie is being sent to BASIC, the basic military training thing. Oh no, says Sam, I got accepted into college. That means we are going on different paths, because those are two separate places. Then we go to the dining room, and there's a note that says that Sam is grounded. Well, no, they also have the talk about how her being gay is a phase. I had an interesting talk with Mom and Dad tonight. They were just in denial. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. All right, last place to go, the attic. Sam, Sam, are you here? She finds the final journal entry from Sam talking <clears throat> about how Sam and Lonnie ran away. Mm. because Lonnie couldn't go through with BASIC. And it was Lonnie, on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to BASIC, and she said she couldn't... she couldn't think of anything but me. Oh my and god, the and voice acting! Anyway, it's very sad. Here's Lonnie, she's at a payphone, standing in the rain. She walks up to the phone and she calls Sam, but Sam doesn't pick up. Sam, where are you? Really? To you. And that's what those voicemails are at the start of the game. So all of this means that Sam ran away with Lonnie, and that's where she is now. And that is the end of the game. Wow, that was very emotional, fellas. I feel like when I grow up one day, I too will become Lebanese. In the style of your great deductions, yeah. can you summarise the plot of Gone Home for us? With a bit of flair. Right. It begins with a family of four. The dad sucks. The mom is a cheater and even worse. The sister ran away and she has become Lebanese. And that's about it. That's the whole story. It would have been better if it was ghosts. But wait, what about Uncle Oscar? Who? Uncle Oscar. He's the one that Terry inherited this house from and then he... Oh, look, forget it. So the moral of the story is... It's a lot better to read on a wiki. Yep. Skip this one, fellas. Question mark? Bro, how good would this be if you just had a gun? Like, you, there's no enemies or anything, because you're in a house. Yeah. But you can shoot stuff in the house. <laughs> yeah, she walks it up. <gasps> Mom? Dad? <laughs> uh, uh, can we show that? Yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> Have you ever wondered, wouldn't it be great to go back to the Middle Ages and then show a video game mm. to, like, the Queen of England back in the 1600s and go, look at this, Your Majesty. This is it? This is the whole game? So the, the fire is burning all around you, right? And, and, and so, listen, right? They lo they, but they really love each other. <laughs> she doesn't want to go to basic. <laughs> Metacritic. Oh my god. Yeah. 86. 86. So this is better than, like, most of the games. What? This is a hundred, right? Oof. So what did he like about, is Gone Home a masterpiece? No. What? Then why did you give it a masterpiece score? <laughs> Just look how it starts. Back in 2010, my wife and I decided to part ways. <laughs> Oh, beastie thing. <laughs> oh. oh, in order to make the transition easier, I went elsewhere for a few days. While she pushed all her physicians out, when I returned to my apartment, now gutted of any sign she'd ever been there. Oh, God, God I was bless not them. expecting. <laughs> yes, yeah, so when my wife left me. Oh, uh, can we check out Pete? Uh, oh, 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 his oh, wife no. took that yeah. too. <laughs> Can this man ever, ever catch a break? Oh, God bless me. That, his review gave me more entertainment value than the entire game. You know what? I'm going to give this a big who cares out of 10. Dun 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 dun. Oh, and then we'll just kind of like cut it off uh, halfway through.